England continued their Euro 2020 qualifying campaign with two games in four days. The three Lions had a 100% record to preserve in what looks, on the surface, a less than taxing path to next summer's finals. The journey resumed against Bulgaria at Wembley and then Kosovo at St Mary's. Gareth Southgate set his team up in a 4-3-3 formation when they had the ball against their unambitious opponents, Bulgaria. Declan Rice, Jordan Henderson and Ross Barkley were the midfield trio. Rice shielded the defence and Raheem Sterling, Harry Kane and Marcus Rashford operated in attack. Southgate used the number of out-of-possession structures depending on how high they were pressing. When they pressed in the final third, they did so in a 4-3-3. The high press was man-focused and highly effective. Sterling, Kane and Rashford each took a central defender, while fullbacks Danny Rose and Kieran Trippier pressed Bulgaria's wingbacks. When operating in a mid-block, they did so in a 4-1-4-1, with Rice remaining the midfield anchor as they waited for a pressing trigger. England had to be very patient in the first half against the deep and compact Bulgarians, so they frequently switched the point of an attack in an attempt to move defenders and create space, and also sent Sterling and Rashford into one-on-ones to encourage them to beat their opponents, draw others towards possession, and create further space. Yet if the home team dominated possession, it was Bulgaria who had the first clear chances. It was regardless England who opened the scoring, when Sterling took advantage of a goalkeeping error to set up Kane for the first of his three goals. Once the deadlock had been broken, it was straightforward for England, who added three second-half goals through two penalties from Kane and a further finish from Sterling. Kane's total rose to 25 goals from his 40 international appearances. Speaking post-match, England's manager was positive but demanded more from his talented side. We can improve on what we did, he said. I don't think it's attitude and certainly not complacency. Generally, I'm pleased, especially some of our attacking play, which was very exciting. Southgate retained the same 4-3-3 for the visit to St Mary's of Kosovo, but started Jadon Sancho over Rashford and rotated his fullbacks, with Ben Chilwell replacing Danny Rose and the more attacking Trent Alexander-Arnold coming in for Kieran Trippier. When out of possession, England again either used a 4-3-3 to press high or operated in a 4-1-4-1 mid-block when dropping off, determined by how high Sterling and Sancho were positioned. When pressing high, England were man-focused, when in the mid-block phases, they encouraged Kosovo to play out wide and then suffocated the ball carrier by packing numbers around him, even if this left them at risk of being outnumbered elsewhere on the rare occasions Kosovo evaded that pressure. Kosovo pressed more aggressively than England would usually encounter in a qualification fixture. While the hosts therefore had limited time and space to receive and were forced to play at a high tempo, their opponents struggled to protect the spaces they left in order to press, presenting Sterling and Sancho with the opportunities to beat defenders one-on-one and take them out of the game with simple turns. Aided by their midfielders quickly playing forwards, England posed their greatest threat in transition. When Kosovo committed numbers forward, Sterling and Sancho exploited the spaces left by the Kosovan fullbacks who had advanced. An error in possession by Michael Keane had already gifted Valon Barisha the chance to give the visitors a surprise lead inside the first minute, but the defender contributed to the crucial equalising goal when after a corner heading down to Sterling, who routinely finished from close range. Sterling then turned provider to create Kane's 26th international goal in the 19th minute and courtesy of the impressive Sancho, England convincingly extended their lead by half-time. First, the forward watched when his cross was turned in by Mergin Vodvjoda, and then, in quick succession before the break, he scored his first two goals for England, having twice been expertly set up by the influential Sterling. At 19 years and 159 days, becoming the youngest player to score more than once for England since Wayne Rooney against Croatia in 2004. Yet if a 5-1 lead suggested a similarly one-sided second half was to follow, Southgate's team were then guilty of complacency. Barisha's finish in the 49th minute should have been the warning they required, but Harry Maguire then brought down Vedat Muriki in the area and the Kosovan responded by scoring from the spot. 
In the 63rd minute, England were awarded a penalty for Amir Rahmani's foul on Bross Barkley, but Kane's effort was saved by Aro Muric, ending a run of 23 consecutive penalties scored in competitive fixtures by England internationals. Southgate, once an international defender, was understandably frustrated by the nature of England's performance. The outstanding features and the poor features are apparent to everybody, he said. We made poor individual mistakes and a poor start to the game, but showed good composure to recover from those mistakes. Our use of the ball in the first half was excellent. They were poor mistakes, not necessarily structural issues for us, but poor individual errors and decisions.